and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And uh, today's puzzle, well, I've tinkered with it a bit, um, trying to respect the colorblind. Um, and there are lots of colorblind people in the world, including the man who delivered um, some hornets to a certain home recently when I'd ordered wasps, but never mind. Um, anyway, that... There are, there are colourblind people, and they do sometimes complain about the colours we use. Now, this puzzle, as it was sent to us, had a very coloured grid, and I have tinkered with it, because the colours were all coded, and what I've done is replaced the colours with numbers. I'll explain that in a moment. Um, but, first of all, many congratulations to the dozens and dozens of people who've sent in correct solutions already to Jovial's Marathon. Some people have taken it at a sprint, and got through it and you don't have to we on the 20th we will draw the deadline and pick the winner of the unbelievable sudoku cushion donated by anita um and i'm sure there will be hundreds of correct entries by then but people are working their way through the puzzles and apparently enjoying them as they go they are as popular as our apps and you can find your way to both Patreon and our apps on the links under the video, where you can also play this puzzle. Now, I'll explain the rules, then I'll explain a bit about the presentation. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. Actually, what I'll do is explain the, uh, the Easter egg in yesterday's puzzle first, which was um, a liar killer puzzle by Prasanna, in which one cage was lying about having the sum um, of its digits written in the corner. And in fact, what it had written in the corner, I didn't particularly notice this, was the difference between its digits. Well, today, every cage that has a number has the difference between its two digits in it. So that's appropriate. Um, now, here comes the kicker. No two cages with the same difference can touch each other, meaning share an edge. They can touch each other... Um, Diagonally, if you like, although I don't really consider that touching each other like a snake. Um, except, however, there is an exception. There's a question marked cage here. We don't know the number, but that cage does touch at least one cage with the same difference. So that other cage or cages is also disobeying the rule, but we, we can understand that there is one exceptional cage here. Um, cells joined with a white dot, there's two instances of this, have consecutive digits, but obviously not all white dots are given since we have a one cage up here with no white dot in it. Um, anyway, these are the rules. The nine in the centre of the grid is obviously not in a cage at all, is not relevant to this. Um, but a really interesting set, and I think we may end up colouring this, but... The problem was it was it was served up to us in F puzzles, much like Jovial's Hunt, and F puzzles has a, a slightly wider colour palette than ours. Also, the way that Ryokai had set it up, there were um, there was a kind of code sheet of what each colour represented. I think it's probably simpler in terms of solving it to present the numbers in the grid. Anyway, apologies if if Ryokai is offended by the presentation, but I think it's going to be an interesting puzzle anyway have a feeling we might end up using colours, but uh, that's to come. Do have a go at it on the link under the video. I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. And we can get cracking for once with eight cages. They must have a one and a nine in, so we can actually place them straight away there. Maybe not here. Um, did I see another eight when I was setting it up? Apparently I didn't. But a 7 cage here under a 9, that has to be 1 and 8. A 7 cage can only be 1 and 8 or 2 and 9. That one now has to be 2 and 9 because this 1, 8 pair means that cell can't be 1 or 8. Ah, and this one, this one is 1, 8 because it's in a box with a 9. That's going to fix the 9, 1 and the 9, 2 cage. So we're away. That's quite a generous start from Ryokai. Um... Seven cage up here has to be two nine. Now there's a one in its box. And we've kind of done the eights and seven cages. Um, now the six 
are the six here can't have a one or a nine in either end because both of those cells can see ones and nines. Therefore, it's got to be two and eight, hasn't it? A right old two and eight is Cockney rhyming slang for a state. Um, this one could be one seven or two eight, I think. Ah, but we've got a 1-8 pair there and a 1-8 pair there. So 1 and 8 have to appear in these cells. That one must be 1 or 8 at the top as well. This 6, I don't know. don't think we've got any information about that at all. Could be any of 9, 7, 2, 8, 9, 3, 8, 2, or 7, 1, I mean. Now this is, ah, oh, that's going to have to be 2 and 7 because they're the lowest and highest digits that can go in. That is very helpful. Right, we can place 2 and 2 and 8 and 7 and 2. Now this can't be 2, 8 anymore. So it's either 1, 7 or 3, 9. Um, interesting the way this works through. Now, what have we, oh, we've got another 5 here. Yes, that's 2, 7 as well. Right. Um, we've got another one here. Does that have to be 3-8? I think it does. Yes, it does. So the fives are being quite useful now. Don't think there's any fives. We haven't filled something in. We've got a four up here and a four here. No marked threes. A single two and a few ones. Okay. Uh, so the four here. We can't use nine or two. No, oh, it's got quite a few possibilities. I suppose it could be one, five, or three, seven, or four, eight. Can't be two, six, or nine, five. Yeah, oddly, it must have the higher digit there. Um, can't resolve those as far as I can see. Now, let's not forget the crop key dots. This one has to be joining digits from 3, 4, 5, and 6. Um, that's got a much wider range. 1, 8 pairs. Ooh, okay, what do we do next? 2, 9, 3, 8, 1. These are the digits we're getting to place. Ah, this 4 cage. Right, it can't be... It could be 5 with 1 or 9. It can't be 2, 6. It can't be 3, 7. It can't be 4, 8 because of that 3, 8 pair. So that is a 5. And that one we don't know. That's quite weird. Actually, look, we've got 9, 8, 1 triples in rows 4 and 5. So this must be a 9, 8, 1 triple down here. Ah, well then we know with the order of them thanks to the digits in the columns already. Right, well that's good. So then we get three, four, or six here. That one can't be a three. And now I, th oh look, this is a two cage, brilliant. Six there, that can't be a six. These are from three, four, and five. Now, what, what I'm thinking is we might have, to, what I actually thought from the start, and it's just getting stronger, is we might have to start coloring these cages to identify them. Then I'm gonna run into the same problem that I was foreseeing originally, which is our limited color palette, which doesn't have nine or ten colors. Um, now, what is this digit? It is three, four, five, or six. Ah, yes, of course. It's like, this is like a run of two white crop key dots, where these must all be joined, because that is neighboring that, or consecutive. Those, those are consecutive digits, because of the one difference. Those are consecutive digits because of the white dot. So this is a run of three here. Um, but I suppose it could go five. Oh no, look, six, what am I doing? Right, this is, I. this includes a four as a pair. This one is also either three, four or five because six isn't available or two. So that is a three, four, five triple. So four is in the middle, right? Sorry, 
bit slow to see that, but I've got it now. That's a 3-5 pair around it. That can't be 4 anymore. Um, 6, 3, 5, 9, 4. This is 7 or 8. Right, I am going to start colouring, but I have got this problem that my colour palette doesn't have all that many useful colours. I know what I'll do. I will colour cages that have a 1 difference with the number that is effectively 1 on the colour palette, which is red. So let's do it this way. Sorry, this might be a tiny bit laborious to watch. Yellow for blue, uh, yellow for two, I mean. Blue is three, but there aren't any givens. Green is four, and there are quite a few of those. Well, no, there aren't. There's two. Um, purple is five, and I think I'm not going to bother with the higher end ones, or maybe I'll color them light gray to just get them out of the way, because... I just don't have the colours to distinguish. So I'll go up to six, which takes me up to orange. And then anything bigger than that, I'm going to colour light grey, just to say I've acknowledged it. Um, that's also light grey. Right, and now, apart from this, let's colour that dark grey, so I'm just noting that it's... It's an exceptional cage. But for the main six colours, red, yellow, blue, green, purple, orange, they mustn't touch each other. That's my rule. That's what I'm going to try and follow. And I hope this might help me identify that. So here, look. Yeah, fair enough. This, oh well, could have worked this out anyway. This can't be a 4-6 pair because it would be yellow and touch that yellow. Um... So it's got a three in it, but I mean, we knew that because the three couldn't be here. So, okay, what numbers are coming in down? Oh no, hang on, there's an eight there, isn't there? So none of those can be eight, so that's an eight. So I can definitely color that light gray as well and ignore it. Now I have one, two, and seven here. That is four or six, so I know the color of that cage now. That is yellow. Two, nine, three. Oh, that can't be three. So we've got five, six, or seven there. But it cannot be five and seven because it would be yellow. It would be a difference of two and touch that one. Excellent. So there's a six in there. So we know that's a four. And this is fixing almost all of box two. That's a five in the in the liar cage this time, the, the, the exception cage. Now... Ah, this can't be one and two, can it? Because it would touch, it would go red and touch that red. So the seven is in there. That is not a seven. Oh look, five has fixed this three and five pair. Uh, seven is in there. This is either five, which is purple, or six, which is orange, and it's perfectly at liberty to be those. This is either blue or green, three or four. So they're unresolved. Oh no, they are resolved. Look, there's a two there, you dingbat. Right. Um, right, that is purple. This is green. This we now know, actually. This is three and four. That is red. Look at the deadly pattern that's forming with that cage, but it's all been resolved, don't worry. Um, okay, this is interesting. So this is now... Three, four, six, or seven by Sudoku. So this cage. Oh, but remember this. Oh, this must. Let's use it as a positive constraint, maybe. This must touch another cage, and it's either one or two. It's either red or yellow. But that's red. Ooh, if this can't be yellow, we're really narrowing this down. But I just don't know. Um. Oh, look, we've got three, four, and five to place. Oh, that's a given six. So many things are coming free. Sorry if you've been shouting at me for not noticing things already. There's every chance of that. Just takes a while. We're, we're getting quite a lot of deductions done. That's been resolved. There you go. One and eight. 
So that's not one and that's not seven. This can't be six. Two, nine, five, one. We've got three, four, six, seven, and eight to place along here. Those can't be eight. This can't be seven. That can't be six. Six, no. Nine, one, eight, two. Why? Uh, why yes, why are those three colours? Because this is the strange exception cage that must touch one of its own type. It's a naughty snake cage. Now, two and seven must appear here. What can we deduce about this box? I'll tell you what, this can't be a five. That's very slightly interesting because that would go red and this three, four cage, which would be forced, would also be red. Um, it would be more interesting to say that it couldn't be a seven or a two. Well, that can't be two, thanks to that. Um, so yes, so if we could stop this being a two, which would be green. And this would be one seven, that would be eight. I don't think that's the way to go about it. Um, that, I'm just noticing, is three, five, six, or seven. Who? okay, how do we, how do we find, oh look, that can't be three anymore. Um, this isn't necessarily a run of three in this, oh no, especially as that's not a one cage, totally different situation. Okay, let's keep looking at this central box. What is going on with these cells? Now, if that was a seven and this was red, ah, that would have to be three, five, and that would be two, four. Yes, this can't be a seven, that's a start. Because if this was six, seven, with a difference of one, that would have to be three, five, that would leave two, four here, but the two, four would be touching an eight, six cage, both with a difference of two. So that's not a seven. So seven's in here. Now, oh, do excuse me for a second. Right, sorry about that. And where were we? Um, looking at these twos and sevens. So if this was, seven's in here now. Ah, so that, oh look, where does five go? We worked out five's not there because that would create two reds touching each other. Five can't be in here with the seven either because you'd get two yellows touching each other. So five's definitely up there. Actually, that doesn't decide what this is, but there's a five in it. Um, oh, I got excited and a bit overexcited there. There was no doesn't conclude everything, does it? Um, now, can that be a 2-7 cage now? Ah, this can't be 4. Because that would be 6-4 and that would be 3-5. And they'd have the same difference. This is very interesting interaction. Um, so this can't be four or five or any of the numbers already here or seven. So it's two or three, I think. Six, nine, eight, one, four, five, and seven all ruled out. So this is either four or three. Let's part color it blue or green. This is either one or red or yellow. Now, if that's a three, then we get two, seven definitely here. And that seems to work for this box. If that's a two, this couldn't be seven, five. Oh, well, it, we knew that. Ah, I don't think, it, don't think it decides it quite. Ah, if it's a two, that becomes one, eight, seven. Oh, I don't know. One, eight, two, nine. This is five, six, or seven. This is three, four, five, or seven. That's just by Sudoku. 
Now, hang on, these can't be red or yellow. This can't have a difference of one or two. It's got to have a difference, therefore, of three or four. Um, which means this must be three or four, doesn't it? Yeah, that can't be low. Yes, it does. This can't be five. So, we've got some traction there now. Ah, that's a three, four, six, seven quadruple in the cage. So this pair is five and nine. Good grief. And that colours it green, which is great, because now this can't be green. It can't be six, two. The colours have helped. That's six, three. We take three out of there. This colour is red. What we have in here now is two and seven, which we can place. They are purple like all the other two and sevens. Uh, that's fixed this as a six. Oh, that doesn't. This is three or four. No, two or three of difference. Ah, oh, well, it can't be two. Perfect, it's three, therefore. Can't go yellow, because it would be touching that yellow. So that's a three. This is now a four, seven, another blue cage. We're suddenly getting loads of blue. Four and seven come out of these cells. So there are three, six, eight, triple. That makes this a seven. So that cage is done. That's fixing that one. This can't be three. Now, that's on the crop key dot. Not helpful. Oh, look, that can't be nine either. So the nine in this row is now here. Two and nine down here. This is a difference of one, so that's not a six. Oh, it's also, sorry, I've got a nine there. So this is two, three, six, eight. We know that color now is yellow. Um, this is a nine. So this color is four or five, which is green or purple. This doesn't have a three, or none of these have a three in it anymore. So this is either red or yellow. Ah, this can't be red, so it can't be a four, five pair. In fact, can't have a five in it. It's got to be six and four. That's deciding everything. Right, I should have spotted that a bit quicker. That has not got a difference of five. This is now yellow. This, hopefully, is not yellow. That's fine. It is red, and we can put in four and five. This has become a three long ago. Four, six, nine. In fact, we can place them all. We might even be able to finish off all the Sudoku now. Four and eight go out of there. Um, oh, we've got a one, three pair. Five, seven, eight, triple. What have we got? We're still going to have to do something with this cage, I suppose. That can't be... Six, three, nine, five. Yes, that's been resolved. Four, five, four, seven. This is now not seven, one. Right, that's fine. One there. That fixes this four cage. That's doing everything we need for the Sudoku up here. Two and eight. Seven and six. Three and eight. Just box two to go. Five, six pair there, which is perfect for red. Three is here, seven is here, four is here. Oh, we've done the colors. Yeah, Sven's made a couple of changes, by the way, to the um, settings. Let's just have a look at those. You've got this peaking Sven, who is the dude who comes up in the top left corner of the uh, grid when you start off the app. Um, and you can hide that if you don't like it. And this was a check on finish that came on, which is probably pretty good for me because as Kevin Slingsby will tell you, I often forget to press the check button while I'm still filming. Um, anyway, four and five, that has become red, although of course it was the cage that is allowed to touch other reds. So it's doing so, it's doing so twice in fact. This seven three is green, one four is a three difference, which is blue like that six three. 1, 9, we're colouring those light grey. 8, 5 is blue. And now, apart from the light greys and this exception cage, we should have no 
touching cages of the same color. And uh, I realize that may not be simple for the colorblind to tell, but I can tell that it is right. And that's a really lovely puzzle. I, I really don't think we've spoiled the presentation of it. And frankly, we couldn't have done it as, as it was sent to us in our own software. So um, thank you so much, Rio Kai, for sending that. Uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing your uh, pseudonym wrongly, but that really is an elegant puzzle, and I've enjoyed that a lot. Uh, do have a go at it. Well, sorry, you, you may. What I mean is I hope you had a go at it. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we shall see you again tomorrow. Um, you will already know if the two teams I'm supporting today, Denmark and England, have done well at the Euros. I don't, as I'm filming this. I'll be finding out later today. Anyway, bye for now. Good to see you. Thank you.